Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be exploring the one faction that we haven't yet used since the new leader cards were introduced. And that is Northern Realms. What? What are you saying? There's a sixth faction? Build card? No. So yeah, so what I was saying, we're going into Northern Realms. And Northern Realms is like, yeah, it's kind of like the faction that CDPR kind of forgot about. They didn't really do anything with it uh, in the last few months. The only new archetype that arose is not really an archetype specific to Northern Realms. It was the Witchers. But uh, still, we did get two new leader cards and one of them is going to be featured in today's deck. Because we're going to go into army building today. We're going to go take a look at Foltest's Commandos. Now you've all seen a Commandos deck, I'm assuming. So the Commandos are the Blue Stripe Commandos that I'm talking about. So these guys allow you to on order summon all the copies of that unit from this deck on the row and once you do that you have like a whole stack of them on the row you start with two but of course these types of decks are built to make more and more of them you've seen commandos before i'm assuming if you haven't these decks try to do that in every single round so there's a few tactics involved that allow you to first play your commandos multiply them and then put them back in your deck so you can drag a whole row of them out of the deck at once we're going to be looking at that in detail in a minute but the the first thing that I really wanted to talk about before we head into the deck itself is I'm finally on the Mac version by the way, you might have noticed that with the different, um, well, borders and everything because I'm not in the usual overlay setup. So yeah, the uh, CDPR finally released Gwent on the Mac M1 versions because all every single Mac that has the M1 chip on board is now able to run like modified versions of the mobile um, version of uh, certain applications and games and in this case of course Gwen so this is like it's structured like the PC version but it's not as performant as the PC version I'm guessing that we'll get improvements on that rather soon as well but it looks very very good so this is also my first attempt at trying to record an episode on Mac but with that said, we're going to go through every single card in this deck. As I said, it's going to be a variation on the Commandos deck that you know, but including the new uh, King Foltest card. We'll talk about him in a minute. If you're not interested in me going over every single card, you can skip this using the timeline down below and you can go straight into the example matches. But I'm really glad that you're still here. We're going to go through these cards one by one and I think I might actually use the full screen now since I'm quite capable of doing that. So first up, we're going through our bl bl blonde, blonde cards, our bronze cards. Uh, so the first one is Karak Marine. This is a devotion deck, so there are no neutral cards in this deck. He starts at three power and allows you to boost an allied unit by four, since we have devotion. You can do that immediately, or you can save that up to do that later. So seven points for four provisions, very strong card. And then kind of similar is Rat of its Royal Guards, another four provision card that has um, quite a bit of boosting potential. He has formation, or they have formation, uh, which allows them to either be played on the melee row, giving them zeal, so they can use the order ability of boosting an allied unit by two immediately, or you can put them on the ranged row, at which time they will boost by one, but not get zeal, so you'll need to wait a turn to use their order ability. But if they're still boosted, they also give the target uh, another two points of armor on top of the two boost that you give them. So potentially, again, six, seven points for four provisions. So good basic uh, bronze card. Then we are getting into the more interesting cards. The Dun Banner will um, also potentially gel very well with King Foltus. We'll be talking about him in a minute. But whenever this card receives a boost, you summon all copies of that card from the deck to the row. So if you manage to put more Dun Banners into your deck, if you boost one of them on the field again, they will also pull those extra copies from the deck. And that's basically what we'll be doing along the matches. Then just to have a bit more filling our deck the Trident Infantry unit for power for four provisions but every time he is boosted he also damages a random enemy by one basically doubling the points you're getting for every single boost if you do one power boost of course. Then the more important card the Blue Stripe Scout so on deploy if you put him on the melee row you can spawn a copy of a bronze allied unit at the bottom of your deck and of course the target that you're going for here should be either the Dunbanner but more importantly of course the Commandos. 
Then another support card, the Temerian Drummer, 3 power, 1 armor, we're getting into the 5 provisions now. At the end of your turn, boost the unit to the right by 1. So simple ancient card, that is actually pretty crucial to this deck, as I'll show you in a minute. And then of course there we have them, the Blue Stripes Commando, so 4 power, 5 provisions, and on Euler you summon all copies of this unit from your deck onto his row. So if you don't have any space for the units anymore, they don't actually get banished, they stay in the deck. So potentially you could then put another one on the other row and start filling that if you have more than a full row in your deck, which is definitely possible with this version of the Commandos deck, so keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, this is the crux of the deck. You should always have one of these on hand because they will allow you to just spam the board full of soldiers. And of course, that is what we're trying to build, full tests army. Then Kutkodak is uh, the only purifier that is, uh, well, specifically for Northern Realms available in a devotion deck. So that's why we've included them, six power, and allows you to purify your adjacent units. Just allows you to get maybe an extra turn out of uh, full test or free up one of your locked commandos if you're not able to free him otherwise. And then the other side of the coin, we have Margarita Loantil. She has zeal, six power, and allows you to lock an enemy unit on order. So if you don't want to use that immediately, you can also store that. But of course, you'll most likely, most often than not, try to use that lock ability immediately. Then reinforcements, another way to add another commando on the field. But more importantly, you want to be using this with the scout. So you copy the scout, which copies a commando and gives you another eight point. Because that is the basic cycle. So once you have a few commandos on the field, so those have four power. So every time you use the scouts, you pull another commando from your deck, put that on the same row, giving you eight points. So if you have reinforcements, you just spawn a uh, scout that copies a commando. And again, you get eight points for those six provisions warfare here. And then Eggman, basically the same thing as the drummers, but with one extra um, power as a base. Also has veil, so can be poisoned or locked. And if you use them on the melee road, you also have an order ability that allows you to damage an enemy unit by three. But of course, if you use that, he will no longer boost the unit on the right by one at the end of every one of your turn. Just an extra drummer, because we will be needing that. They are vital for the most, well, the biggest combo in this deck. Then Anna Strenger, another one that basically does the same thing. So four power in every ally turn on turn and you boost the unit to your right by one. But if she is boosted, she boosts both her adjacent units by one. So you can get a little bit of a very nice combo going just by having her in between like a drummer and something else. So the drummer will boost Anna and then Anna will boost both the drummer and whatever is on her right side. Voimir, of course, since we're dealing with an army of commandos, Voimir is very powerful. So five power and one armor and on deploy, you can boost an allied unit and all of its copies by one and give them one extra armor. You could do this on the commandos, you can do this on the Dun Banners. Uh, and there's even another unit that you can use that on, but I'll not spoil that too quickly here. Princess Pavetta, another crucial card for this deck, six power. And on deploy, you shuffle a bronze unit and all copies of it from your graveyard into your deck. So remember what I told you before in the first round, you will be trying to build up an army of commandos. And then in the next round, you want to put all those commandos that are now in your graveyard, you want to put them back in your deck. So in the final round, or even in that second round, you want to play them all in one go and slam the board with a huge amount of points. So that is what Pavetta is very powerful into. She can just put all those commandos right back into your deck so you can use them again. Then a very peculiar, um, well, addition that I've made for myself. Full tests is a very interesting card, which is why I've also included Erland. I'm gonna explain full test first because he's important so I can expla explain why I'm actually including Erland here. So we're going to King full test first. 12 provisions, seven power, and the first time a bronze unit on your side of the battlefield is boosted each turn, you spawn a base copy of it at the bottom of your deck. And if you have devotion, you also spawn, you boost that copy by one as well. Which means that as long as full test is on the board, the very first bronze unit you boost will get a copy of it on the bottom of your deck. So both the Dun Banners are very good targets for this. And of course the commandos, because you have um, abilities that can pull them from the deck immediately. At the Dun Banner, it, this actually works 
directly if you put it in banners on the melee row, if I'm not mistaken. So you boost that in banner. King Fold Test Triggers puts an extra Dun banner at the bottom of your deck. But then it's pulled because the Dun banner has the ability to pull any copies from the deck once he is boosted. And that is the order in which that works. But I think if you put him on the range row, um, the turn order kind of blocks that. So you have to wait another turn before that second Dun banner is pulled from the deck. For commandos, um, depending on how you set this up, you will most likely be automatically boosting, so you'll have to wait a turn to pull that extra commando out. But with King Fold Test, you basically have um, an extra commando every single turn. So that's why you can fill your deck up with so many commandos that you uh, won't be able to fill... Well, you won't have enough space for all of your commandos on a single row, so you, can, you might be able to start filling a second row with commandos. But that is Fold Test, he just basically fills your deck. So this deck... Um, is really weird because it basically fills your deck on your own, so you're not relying on uh, getting filled by Nilfgaard. But then, of course, because your deck is filled with so many units, Erland becomes more interesting to use in the later rounds. So if you play Erland after you've used Pavetta to put all those commandos back in the deck, then Erland will boost every single one of those commandos by one meaning that your swarm of commandos has become even stronger. Put Voimir right on top of that, and all of your commandos are suddenly at 6 power, which is really, really good. Um, and even on top of that, if you play him rather late, preferably before you pull your commandos from the deck again, you also gain immunity if you're at Adrenaline 3, so 3 cards or less. Uh, and his order ability allows you to pull any remaining boost from your deck and boost this guy um, by the same amount. So just being very efficient in how you get those boosts back. So either they're on the field under the commandos or they're going from somewhere else. And then another 12th provision card is Roach Merciless. So uh, 12 provisions, which is pretty hefty, but he is pretty crucial to this deck as well because he allows you to spawn another Blue Stripes Commando if you either manage to kill a unit with the two damage that he deals, so you gain zeal and you can use his order ability to spawn a blue stripes commando immediately, or you'll have to wait a turn or use our leader ability. I'll talk about that in a minute. But basically Roche allows you to get another uh, commandos out on the field just in case that you didn't get one or all of your commandos, your usable commandos are out of commission. And then we even have uh, two more 13 provision cards in this deck. So Drog first, which is also a mainstay in Commando stacks. So seven power and on the ploy you transform all allied human units in this row into Kedweni Revenants without changing their power. Filling up the row with Kedweni Revenants again, making this the third option for Vormir to boost all those Revenants. Those Revenants have the order ability to damage a unit by one, and if you kill a unit with that one damage, you spawn another copy of the Get Many Revenants on the same row. It's a very powerful finisher on your second to last card, because in the next turn you will have a lot of units that will just allow you to ping uh, on the other side of the board, just destroy a few low level units and get more Revenants in return. Uh, especially since you will most likely have a full row of uh, commandos, and Drog is just perfect to turn those into damage dealers in one go. And then the final card is Amphibious Assault, the Echo Tutor. So play an Orden Realms unit from your deck with a provision cost of 9 or less. So the better cards you won't be able to pull with this. But you boost that card by 1 for each provision below the limit. Which could be very powerful. But if you want to forego... Um, there's a few changes you can do here. If you want to forego the Devotion on King Foltest, which is the only reason why we're going for a Devotion list, you could, for example, uh, swap out Erland for a um, Renew. That is the That allows you to actually pull the Commandos from the Graveyard a second time, because you could use Renew to revive um, Princess Pavetta. So fill up your Graveyard with Commandos in round one, bring them back with Pavetta and pull them from the deck with one of those Commandos, and then in the last rounds, use Renew to put all the secondly dead commandos back into your deck and use that again. So that is basically triple commandos, uh, made very popular by Baby Yosus from uh, Team Bandit Gang. That is still an option if you want to just replace Erland with that and we, you have a more standard triple commandos deck. And of course, Amphibious Assault, you could techni technically replace that with Onoiromancy as well, again, if you want to get rid of Devotion. But this is a Devotion deck and it's just a fun meme deck that I want to go with. Um, then of course our leader ability is Inspired Zeal, so on order you boost an allied Northern Realms unit by one and give it zeal. So meaning that you can 
very easily use your commandos without any trouble. And that's the deck in its fullest, all the cards in its fullest. Let's head into a couple of example matches. So the first match we're going against Crime, so that might be a little bit of a difficult one. Uh, Line Pockets is a very good deck still, so uh, we might actually be losing here, but I'm always too soon with telling us that. But uh, let's see, we have Princess Pavetta here, so that's not really useful. Um, although I could get rid of the Tritum Infantry unit first, we get Erland, which is pretty good. Uh, we're gonna need Princess Bavetta at one at some point. But I don't want to risk getting another Blue Stripes Commando out, so I'm gonna finish redrawing for now. So the first few plays are always pretty similar. You want to start with a Commando, use one of your leader charges on top of it, so it pulls its copy from the deck, and then you can start get the ball rolling. Um, yeah. Our opponent is going to go with the classic crime start, so uh, we're going to get a safe cracker. Then over gradient justice, and then get another uh, safe cracker from that. But, uh, very important player, blue stripes commandos on the range row, because the scouts are actually forced on the melee row. So you don't want to fill up the range row with anything else than your commandos. And then we just use Inspired Seal on that first commando and then get the copy from the deck. So what you want to do after that is try to put down a booster. I'm guessing that's not going to work right now. Um, we're actually even getting a bloody good fun here. So our um, commando is dead. That's not that much of a problem. I'm going to try and get the booster down. Um, that should still work unless we get hit by a really aggressive play here. I don't think we will, but let's get the booster down first. So the Temerian drummer goes right next to the commando. And then we get boosted on the commando. So that's what's going to happen. The commando is automatically boosted by the drummer. And the next play that you want to do is put King Foltest on the melee row. So every time that unit is boosted, you will get an extra commando in your deck. We get an Overgradient Justice now, so it kind of delayed the effect there. We get another Safe Cracker, of course, with the uh, very big points there. Um, so now, if we play King Foltest, as you see, so that's his ability that we talked about before. Every time you boost a Bronze unit, you will get a copy of that boosted... Well, the first one you boost, you will get a copy of that unit at the bottom of your deck. So now we have a Blue Straps Commando, it gets boosted, and then you'll see that pop up in the deck. There we go, we got an extra Commando, so if I check that over here, we now have an extra Commando, and it's actually boosted. So now they're going to try and take out Foltest, I'm assuming, that looks like it's another bloody good fun. Oh, we're actually getting... Oh, the drummer gets seized. That is not that big of a deal, actually. Um, because now I'm gonna actually use Amphibious Assault to get Anna Strenger out. And Anna Strenger is also a booster. We kind of waste her here a little bit by putting her not between two units. But that will boost the commando as well and we get another one in the deck. So there you go. Now we have one and two commandos in our deck. Since we started on red coin, it doesn't really matter too much. We're trying to... Uh, fill up the deck as much as possible. I'm gonna put a Tridem Infantry unit here right now. There we go, that's gonna give us a few extra points. It doesn't look like we'll be outpacing our opponent, although with the Ana play, might as well. And as long as this is going, we're getting extra commandos, so definitely not a problem at all. And then we get excommunication on that. Ooh, and there's a tunnel drill. There it is, that's really early for a tunnel drill. And I don't mind at all, so that's gonna doubly hit Anna, I suppose. Oh no, they're going for full tests. That's not smart, is it? Because they need another hit for full test there, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't too smart, I think. Um Hmm. So we're getting two to three points every turn. So that's four five points afterwards hmm i'm gonna keep the scout for now i don't really need to do anything else yeah let's pass let's pass we could still push with commandos if you wanted to because right now i think we have uh three extra commandos in our deck 
Um, it will depend on what our opponent does. So if our opponent now passes, then we're going to play Pavetta and put the two commandos that we've lost so far back into our deck. That's not a problem at all. If our opponent doesn't pass, then I think we might as well push with a few of our older combos. I think I'm going to get rid of the Dun Banner for now, because I have Pavetta as a pass play. Reinforcements is good on the Blue Stripe Scout, and I can pull out one of the commandos with Amphibious Assault if I need to. So everything else actually looks pretty good. So let's finish redrawing for now. And our opponent is actually pushing, so on Aeromancy going into... That is weird, so many Eternal Fire guys on the... Uh, so the Cleric of Flaming Rose, the Fire Sworn guys on the board. So he's gonna spawn another Zealot, I suppose. Or not, he's just boosting his coin count there. Hmm. Yeah, so let's use Amphibious Assault on... Although it might be an overplay. No, it's not an overplay. Let's use Amphibious Assault on the Blue Stripes Commando. Put that on the back row. Uh, and then use another... Are they able to actually kill that? I don't know if they're able to actually kill it. Doesn't really matter. We have three charges of Inspired Zeal. Might as well use it. Uh, might actually scare off our opponent enough to uh, stop. And there we go. You saw that I'm actually playing on Mac. The sidebar is over there. I should have moved that to... Although the left is just as problematic. I'm gonna have to see where I'm gonna put that. And there we go. We get a pass. Which is fine by me. So that's another two commandos that are now going into the graveyard. The only thing that I'm really scared of right now is I don't have Amphibious Assault anymore. Um, so I really need to get Roach in my hand next. I'm gonna take the guess. Um, so, I mean, I'm a card ahead, so I might as well take the guess. I lost Amphibious Assault, but that was, yeah, I think it was worth it. Because now, if we manage to get Roach, we have a really good combo going. If we don't, yeah, that's gonna be too bad. And we don't get him at the first few cards. Um, right of its Royal Guards can go. And the Dunbanner can go, but this isn't looking good. Yeah, okay, we got Drog instead. Okay, okay, that is annoying. Um, hmm. That is really annoying. I'm gonna put Princess Buffetta out there as well. Might as well, because um, I can put all the commandos back into the deck. Uh, so right now we have a lot of commandos in the deck, so there's four more of those there. Uh, didn't really show you that in full now, because I won't be able to pull another one out, because I didn't get Roach. Usually you want to try and get Roach on the, on the field there. Huh, Bounty. Okay. F fair enough, I suppose. That is interesting. Do they have a card to kill? Oh, I can just purify it. Kind of forgot about this guy. I'm just going to purify it. There we go. <laughs> there probably won't be a better usage for a good Kodak in here. And they probably won't be expecting that. Another purify in a Northern Realms Devotion deck. And we get Lieutenant von Hurst. There's really peculiar cards in this crime deck. Um, I'm gonna use Margarita to actually um, lock that. So there we go. No more extra fire sworn for you. And then, of course, I'm gonna have to put uh, Eggman on the field. The only annoying thing that I won't really have is the, yeah, Voime play. Um, although I could still use that with Drog, so that's not too problematic. I can still row stack everything on the melee row. And then we get Sir Skewertooth. Yeah, I'm gonna row stack on the melee row. Um, and try to actually get the boosts on the range row, because these crime decks these days definitely tend to have some sort of Gerald in play, so uh, let's see where we're going with this. And then we get Horse and Senior giving him... Yeah, giving them a lot of heavy ticks against me every time they play a crime card. Gonna have to be careful about that, but... The play right now is actually to... Yeah, I'm gonna get the scout over here. Doesn't really matter, I can put another correct marine in the deck. That is absolutely fine. And there goes the dock again. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find something to uh, over up the dock. I could probably disable it. And we get Oneiromancy again. Probably gonna get Cleaver this time. Yep, yeah, there we go. There's Cleaver. I'm really curious because I'm not sure that I'm gonna um, either lose or win this. It's really weird because this is a crime card, so that means that Cleaver gets boosted, so Skewertooth gets boosted, and we get hit by a double, yeah, 
got up hit there. So that is annoying, but not that much. Because um, we can use reinforcements now on the Kayak Marine. We're going to put that guy over here as well. Um, and then boost Eggman with that. So we get one more boost out of Eggman. We're not... Yeah, we're not far enough ahead now, but we'll see how this ends. I'm going to use Drog next on that row. Uh, and then we still have, like, the... Um, the Erland play. So it's not the end of the world. We got hit on Eggman there. But that is absolutely fine. I'm gonna hit the cut up with uh, 3 damage from Eggman. Put the Drog down. And then Inspire Zeal the first get when he Revenant since he's at 2 power. So that really doesn't matter all that much. And kill one of the cut ups. So that's gonna cut down on their wink wink on their damage healing potential there so that is absolutely fine and then i can use erland which will be immune Ooh, when we get slander on that that one interesting well that's absolutely fine i think so i'm gonna play erland now erland is gonna be that's gonna be mostly units right that's 14 units so that means that's 14 extra points so that's 18 points on erland um, so definitely playing him over here. And then we're gonna have to see... I can kill... With the lower units. So let's put... That's gonna be two Kedweni Revenants. Uh, do I have a full row now? Yeah, I have a full row now. So can't really help with anything else now. I could hit another one, but I'm guessing this one is gonna die. Uh, so might as well stop it here. I still have those extra extra charges in a minute. I can kill whatever I want with it. So that's going to be great, I suppose. Opponent is deciding. Oh yeah, whether to pay tribute or not. Yeah, there we go. So Graydon paying five coins. I wouldn't have done that because that's not worth it. Because you only boost by you only boost by six. Oh yeah, because the base uh, the base of that unit was higher. But now um, we have one. Two over here, and now we're gonna look at something that is unarmored because we don't really care. So that was a good play to. Oh, that that one was was shielded. Yeah, that wasn't. But the shield wasn't visible. That was that was weird. But then Formir, Formir is gonna give us eight extra points, and then of course we don't forget to double click Erland, and we get 19 points out of that, and we won against a very weird crime stack. That was peculiar. Let's do another one. So for our final match, we're heading up against Nilfgaard, which could or could not be problematic. It all depends on which cards they pull and if they get lucky with something like Cantarella or the Alchemist. But we're actually doing really good on the cards that we've pulled. The only thing that I really want to get as well is Vernon Roche. If the game would like to start. Okay, there we go. It's a bit weird, so let's get rid of our double commandos. I always try to get rid of the dumb banners as well. Because we could risk pulling another one. Yeah, let's get rid of them. Um, and we get another Blue Stripe Scout, which is also really good. And other than that, this looks good. Ah, uh, we get another Trident Infantry unit. Fair enough. Okay, so against Nilfgaard, the... Um, Crystal Skull... Should probably go... I don't have Kut Kodak to purify, but I could grab him if I want to. Yeah, so let's put the Blue Stripes Commando down. Uh, inspire Zeal him. And get that second commando out of the deck. Now, you could Crystal Skull it, but I tend to use Crystal Skull on... Hmm, on the drummer, but I have backups for the drummer right now, so might as well put the Crystal Skull on that commando. And show the dock again, obviously, because that's what this Mac version is forcing me to do constantly. And pause. Well, not pause, just get to the next turn. <laughs> End the turn. And we get a Nausicaa Sergeant to start, which is fine, which means if we get hit with some Assimilate, that might actually work in our favor. Um, I could put Eggman down there. Now let's put just just put it simple with the Temerian Drummer, our basic starting play. Uh, and if that Drummer survives, then we have a nice uh, combo with Full Test. If he doesn't, then we still have Eggman that I can use. So Eggman on the range row this time, which is of course weird because we can't use his order ability that way. But it's still better because of the full test play, because even the one blue com blue stripes commando we get extra from that is just huge. And we get poisons. 
We get poisoned on the first commando there, which is fine. Absolutely fine. I could um, use one of my, uh, well, the amphibious assault to get good Kodak, but I'm afraid that King Foltest will be poisoned first or locked. And I can use good Kodak to purify Foltest and get another one out of there. Unless, of course, we now get hit with the Anniversary Invocation and we just lose it all altogether, but there's nothing you can do about that. The Anniversary Invocation is kind of one of those very uninteractive plays because you can't defend from uh, just somebody picking any card from your side of the field. But it does give me the chance to show off what the power of um, Foltest really is. So we get Artorius, weirdly enough. That is interesting because we got poisoned on, the <laughs> on that one uh, commando there. Why, why wouldn't you be killing that commando now? Why are you trying to freak me out? I don't know if he was trying to freak me out. But if you now play the Blue Stripe Scout on the Blue Stripes Commando, and uh, we double click, click that, we actually get two commandos. And that's just, yeah, now we're, now we're rolling. This is the combo that I wanted to show. Because it's just so powerful, because we got another commando in our deck right now. And that means we're up to five commandos. And if we get Roche in our hands, that might even be better. Of course, I'm very well aware that this is a big Igni target, but usually Chinese ball doesn't really roll with Igni. If they would, that would be very weird. And of course, that and at, at, at these sort of situations, you always tend to run into an Igni, a very surprised Igni. Um, but no, we get the Duchess Informant. Ooh, that is actually smart. That is actually smart. Now, Left, hmm. right. <laughs> so because it's at the left, the Duchess Informant will always be the one that gets boosted first. So every time that Duchess Informant is going to get boosted, we're going to get another um, another one of those. But I have a plan for that as well. Uh, I'm going to put reinforcements on the Blue Stripe Scout. Uh, going to get another double commando play out of here. So there we go. Um, and then I'm going to actually use an Inspired Zeal Charge on one of the commandos. So a second Inspired Zeal Charge. So now that is the first one that gets boosted. And we get another commando. Um, and that, yeah, life is good, I think. I don't need to pull that from the deck because I'm quite far ahead already. And I want to position something between the drummer and the Duchess Informant in a minute. So we're getting an emissary, basically filling up that row. That is, that was not something that I was expecting. Um, I don't mind too much. Um, I could actually use um, amphibious assault now to grab one of the Karak Marines. I'm actually going to do that. So. Let's use Amphibious Assault, use the Karak Marines and actually use them as they were intended here. I'm going to use them over here and then boost my least boosted Blue Stripes Commando by that. And we get another Commando in our deck. There we go. I think so, because I might actually have put another... No, it didn't count the Karak Marine as boosted because it was not on the field. It actually sells your side of the battlefield, so that's why the Karak Marine wasn't actually used. And even with the Duchess Informant, I don't actually mind too much getting that uh, card as well, because that allows me some really interesting plays. Because um, even this is now going to add the Duchess Informant to my deck, so basically filling it up for me. There we go. So you saw the deck uh, count going up. We have Pavetta in hand, so that is good. The only thing that I really want in hand now is Vernon Roach. We still have Amphibious Assault as well, so we regardless have a way of pulling out uh, a commando if you want to. Ooh, two done banners. Yeah, definitely want to get rid of those guys. Uh, we get Anna and we get, yeah, rid of its Royal Guards. Okay, okay, fair enough. We have a few plays here. Um, and that means that I can actually just pass this. I don't want to push. Because um, my big play is going to be with Pavetta anyway. You see, the, ch the size of my graveyard at the moment is huge. So I am going to pass and go for a very long final round. And then our opponent does Experimental Remedy. Are they going to pull one of the commandos out of my deck? I mean, it's, it's there right, I suppose, but it doesn't really hurt me. <laughs> I mean, I have so many commandos, if we, if we count this, um, that was not the right thing to count. 
So we have uh, five here. We have two more in here. Yeah, two more in here. So that's seven. And if I get Roach, we actually get eight and that's a full row. But we might not actually be getting Roach. Doesn't seem like it. I'm going to keep the Tridom Infantry unit. He's actually really interesting here. Might get rid of Radovitz Royal Guards. And we get Voimir. And then let's get rid of the Scout. I'm not going to be able to use the Scout. Okay, that's... That is absolutely fine. Um, gonna play things slow. As a start, I don't need to slam the board with the commandos in one go. But remember, we should probably, although it doesn't really matter at this point, but I think I'm gonna put the commandos on the range row again. And our opponent starts with Joachim. Interesting. Um, we get a poisoner in one go. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. A 12 point poisoner. Don't really mind that much. Do I play Eggmund? Probably should play Eggmund as a start. There we go. Eggmund over there. Can't really be poisoned, so the only thing that they're probably going to poison is Joachim again. And Joachim might actually be hit by another Coup de Grasse. Oh, well, the first Coup de Grasse, because we haven't seen Coup de Grasse just yet. And we get Coup de Grasse immediately, okay. Should have maybe um, purified Joachim there, so we couldn't actually Coup de Grasse it. Because he would have needed another hit for that. Um, but now we can at least just put Anna in between there. They get another Nausicaa Sergeant, so that's just 24 points. It's not just 24 points, but it is 24 points. Uh, let's put Anna in between here. Um, I'm guessing that my Anna is either going to get poisoned or locked. Which means that I have two poisoned units right next to each other. Um, or status affected units right next to each other. So I can use Kutkadak next to block that off. So there we go, Masquerade Ball is uh, not that problematic just yet. Have I, something in my team? Uh, I am going to put the Tridem Infantry unit over here now. Your so there we go. So that's again the double uh, damage loop and this time there's not really much that our opponent will be able to do against that. Aside from maybe locking something, but still I have the Purifies ready if I need to do uh, some repairing. If I can call it that. And we get Bratens. Bratens is gonna probably grab the Tridom Infantry unit. I would assume. He's gonna put that... Oh no, Emissary. It's gonna go on to the Thirsty Dame, I'm assuming, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, not that much of a problem either. I can just put the, tr the Temerian Drummer over here. But I'm starting to run out of space, by the way. That's gonna be interesting. Um, let's put the Drummer over here again. So that's still the same loop, just putting it to 5 points now every single turn. Which is uh, definitely not to be underestimated. Good Kodak will purify whatever is getting locked in a minute. Or poisoned. And I don't actually mind that there's going to be some space uh, getting removed. That is going to be... is that just going to be... yeah, Tourney Joust. Tourney Joust on the, uh, on the drummer, fair enough. Still going to be nice, some nice boosts on the Temerian... Uh, Infantry there, and we get the double cross. Is there gonna be? Ooh, there's gonna be a lock. Is that gonna lock Anna or the Temerian infantry unit? Is it gonna lock Anna? Is it gonna lock Anna? Is she gonna lock Anna? But that—that's a veiled unit. Okay, that was a kind of a misplay of my opponent. Well, it's high time that I just use my Margarita. Then I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm still keep drinking, thinking about the. The drink, but uh, let's just lock that Thirsty Dame because we know there's a lot of uh, poisons incoming. Uh, so might as well do that. Still getting about four points every single turn. So not too shabby, I think. Our opponent wasted a leader ability basically with a lock that didn't go anywhere. They did get one point of assimilate on that, but yeah, basically nothing. And maybe one, one point on the Thirsty Dame. And we get Invocation, yeah. And Invocation is going for one of the Joachims. Uh, what? That means that right now we're gonna go for Princess Pavetta. Yeah, let's just go for Princess Pavetta with the commanders. Remember, that was that was what this deck was all about, right? Putting those commanders back into our deck. So that is filling up our deck with all those commandos. And then next up, we're gonna use Erlen to boost all of them. And then, of course, use uh, Amphibious Assault and a final Inspired Zeal Charge to pull all of them out in one go. And that's how we're gonna defeat this 
Lazy Chinese ball player. So my opponent is most likely hesitating on what to do next because of course there's a lot of points on the field so a lot of nice juicy poison targets. And we get our first aristocrat, Roderick of Duntine. He's gonna probably try and poison. Oh no, we get Joachim actually. Joachim and then the poisoner. And Joachim is another aristocrat so he will be able to double poison. That is too bad. That is, he's poisoning the... what? What are you doing? What are you doing? And that's a poison on the veil again. What the hell are they doing? Um, so now my top row is filled. Fair enough, I guess. Um, I'm still going to use Erland. Because of course it is annoying that we're getting blo row blocked like that. Uh, so let's just put Erland down. The problem with a full row is as well, if they still have the Usurper in their hands, they won't be able to use it properly because it will be only 9 points instead of 12. I guess we'll see in a minute what's going to happen because this is really weird. And then we got Cantarella, which which is, I mean, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Do they have a Devotion? Yeah, they probably have Devotion. Chinese ball usually is devotion, so they'll get four points instead of... Damn. Yeah, they're gonna get four points instead of uh, two. They're gonna use them immediately or not? I'm gonna have to play them now. I don't really... It's... I'm gonna lose two cards, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, blue stripes commando. And we can fill up the entire row, I think. Um, so let's just inspire zeal that. There we go. Uh, and double click that and that's gonna fill up the entire board yeah and we're still 11 points ahead with uh still three points every turn so we might get poisoned once more but if we get a free space then that's gonna be good but right now it looks like oh this is gonna be close i won't be able to play my see there we go usurper is useless now you filled up the roads yourself so yeah, that doesn't do anything. Uh, so I'm gonna toss Kutkodak. Just on the off chance that I can still use Voimir. And remember, I still have three damage with Eggman and then everything from Erland, which is gonna be eight points. So yeah, I think I got him here. I got them here. And they purified something. I don't care. You're gonna lose regardless. You're gonna lose regardless. So yeah, just hit something. And then Erland. There we go. That's another 9 points. And whatever the hell. There we go. <laughs> 112 points. That was a juicy match. There we go. There we go. There we go. That was nice. So there we go. You saw the main play of this deck working out really well a few times especially in that last match we got a entire row of commandos in one go just blocking a few tactics from our opponent also blocking our entire field we didn't use our final two cards but that didn't matter we still won the match which was really cool so you're still reliant on a few high power cards so if you want to swap out amphibious assault for uh on aeromancy i don't blame you it's probably also a very good swap it's just the same um the same provisions there and it is a very good swap. But Erland, I feel he's proven his worth in these matches as well. So I think he's a really good addition to this type of deck. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think of this deck. I'm really curious about your input on this. Because I feel like Foltest is an underappreciated card. Because he's really, really powerful in the right uh, matchups. And that's it for today. It, this was my first foray in the Mac version of uh, Gwent. The desktop version of Gwent. Because this was, yeah, it was really cool to finally do this. I hope my setup survived this and uh, this actually turned into a video. Well, if you're watching this, this turned into a video. So that must have worked out uh, if you have any feedback on audio quality or uh, video quality let me know as well curious if you see any differences between uh, what my fellow youtubers and streamers are doing with Gwent um, just let me know because I'm really curious about that so 
Also, if you've seen anything else that can add, be added to this deck, let me know. The deck guide is also in the description down below. The link to Play Gwent is there as well. So you can copy this deck into your own deck builder and play around with it. If you have any tips, let me know, because that's what we're here for, after all, trying to help each other out. So uh, with that said, thank you enormously for watching, because I'm really, really enjoying the feedback these days. My uh, deck guides are really doing quite well, and I love the interaction I have with you people. So... Uh, Thank you guys enormously for the support and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.